It wasn't very long ago that the half slice as a concept didn't exist. Well, maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't. You could go back to some of the boats from the late 1980s, Jimmy Snyder, Roger Zabel, guys like this around Friendsville in West Virginia were doing boats like the half slice that we know today. And there was actually a very popular one done by Jimmy Snyder, the Sleek, which came out of the 1990s. But generally speaking, half slices as we know them today didn't really come around until about 10, 15 years ago. You could possibly credit Liquid Logic with the Brop with the first modern version of a half slice. Now, half slices have evolved quite a lot since the ones from the 90s and even from the early ones in the uh, late 2000s and sort of early 2010s. And half slices were generally about nine feet long and they mimicked modern creek boats. They were sort of following the same lengths and design concepts of creek boats, a little bit less rocker in the nose, a little bit less volume in the bow. And the key difference being a really slicey tail that allowed you to squirt and pivot the boat. And what this did for most paddlers is it opened up the ability to be able to play on creeks that you're very familiar with. You could run class four or class five, depending on your skill set, creeks that you know very well and you wanted to spice things up. But it was very much the same sort of style of paddling that you would do or the same kind of river, but sportier. Now, half slices have evolved quite a lot since the ones that we saw in the 1990s. Even though they were following what we would consider to be basically creek boats, what's happened recently is there's been a split. And the half slice as we know it today has evolved into something that's far more creekable. The Super Skip RR, the boat that we do, is one good example of how half slices have evolved into what is really a full on creek boat rocker and creek boat bow volume but still with a much smaller tail than creek boats were six, seven years ago. Now you wouldn't say that they're really squirtable, it's more like pivotable. And that allows you to dip the tail of the boat underwater and to shorten the waterline and to turn it much faster than a normal creek boat would be. And that's opened up a whole new way of paddling that's been heavily influenced by traditional half slices over the last decade or so. Conversely, what we've also seen is a split in the other direction with boats going smaller down towards about eight feet, somewhere around there. And you've got some of them hovering just under eight feet and some of them just over eight feet. But essentially what happened was when half slices started to become far more creakable as they developed creek boat rockers and creek boat volumes. So then it opened up the possibility to make these half slices way more playful, way more sporty. And that's what we saw with the drop in length and also an overall drop in volume, much more aggressive tails, much more playful on the river. Within these new eight foot half slice designs, we see an array of different styles, ranging from something that is very, very playful and very river play focused, like for example, the glide, up to something which is uh, far more creaky focused or river running focused, like perhaps you could say the firecracker or the scucks. And they all have a common DNA in the sense that the goal is to liven up your river running and your light creaking without trying to go full on creaking. So where does the Super Send R fit into the modern concept of a river running half slice? Well, first of all, we took the concepts behind the Super Skip RR, a very efficient, very good skippy creek boat, brought it down to eight feet in length, an overall reduction in width and size, but definitely still creek boat rockers, creek boat widths in the nose of the boat, and sort of creekish boat volume in the bow of the boat. But then we paired that off with a very squirtable tail so that you can play this thing. We also then got into the hull of the boat and we wanted this to be very playful on a wave, very fun, very carvy, very responsive generally speaking, going in and out of eddies, playing around, surfing waves, as you can see in the videos that accompany this explanation. So the Super Send R might be what you would consider to be in the middle of the most creakable and most playful new eight foot half slices, the glide being the most aggressive, most playful, 
uh, river wave play focused, but still big volume bow compared to the stern of the boat. And then you've got other much bigger noses on boats like, for example, the Skucks that really have a lot of width and a lot of volume packed into the nose of the boat so that you can really run hard stuff. We really wanted something that was going to be playful, sporty, exciting, that you can go down to, say, Chile for the winter and take one boat and have a great time. Run everything, all of the hard stuff, all the steep creeks that are down there. You could then go run some of the big volume stuff and you can surf all the waves. So there's been a lot of focus of this boat to take the original concepts of half slices that were these longer, more speedy boats and compact it down into something very exciting, very playful, but ultimately still very forgiving. A couple of the features that distinguish this boat from other boats on the marketplace is, for example, this safety hatch in the front where we have a throw bag that sits right up there. So you can access a throw bag for boats to swim a rescue without having to pop your skirt. This also holds a modern smartphone. So you can put this in the back of the boat. You can put a smartphone in here, snacks or whatever, and you don't have to bring dry bags with you on the river. And this is a really cool, neat little feature that is on the Super Sender, and we're going to start seeing it being incorporated in other boats that we have. Another cool feature that you'll find in all sole boats is we put the drain plug on the front of the boat. This boat has the power seat in it, which is a very performance-focused, performance-based seat. It's a little bit more complicated to adjust than our Mega Comfy, the foam seat, but this is the ultimate seat for control. We don't sell the boat stock with the seat because most people, when they try to get them, kind of fumble around and they don't, can't figure out how to get into the boat when it's in a store, for example, or if they're at a demo day and there's nobody to explain how to get in, in and out of it because it is a little bit different. But once you get used to it, super easy. And our experience has been that most people who try the power seat never go back to a different kind of seating system. In fact, we install these in other manufacturers and brands boats all the time. It comes with a lightweight back band, the power seat because you don't need that big back band over there. And it comes with our roller cam buckles. These buckles work on a uh, roller that allows you to adjust it very easily. Anybody who has tied boats on the roof of a car knows that cam buckles are really reliable. And so this is why we do it this way. We find it's better than having ropes and cleats, which tend to break over time and tend to slip. You will notice on the hull of this boat that it is essentially a flat hull all the way from this rail to that rail over here. It has an ever so slight curve to it, but not really very much. And then this secondary edge over here is lifted quite far off the bottom of the boat, making it a lot more forgiving than if this rail was lower. That will have a big effect on the way a boat handles, and how loose it is on a wave, and also how forgiving it is. We wanted this to be forgiving, of course, and part of that forgiveness is also by tucking the sidewall. And the more you tuck the sidewall of the boat, then the easier the boat becomes. In the nose of the boat, you can see we have this ridge running through the front of the boat, something which you've seen on some other brands of boats. And this is something that I started working on with my slalom boats back in the late 80s and the early 90s when I was training for the Olympics. And I had a wing like that on a slalom boat that I had developed and it, it did what it was supposed to do. It's actually what I raced at the Barcelona Olympics, had a wing not quite as defined as this, but something along those lines. You'll notice the rocker brake on this boat is very defined. You have this constant curve all the way through to the seat, and right of the seat, it's a sharp turn and almost a straight line to the back of the boat. And that allows the boat to drop very easily onto the back of the boat. So before you even start to get the back of the boat under the water, you already have shortened up the water length and allows it to whip around very quickly, even if you're not already under the water on the back of the boat. It still comes around very quickly. And of course, one of our other features is we have this wheel housing over here so that you can carry your boat by dragging it on a wheel without having it on your shoulder in places that allow for it. So gravel roads, tar roads, dirt roads, things like that. Obviously, you're not going to portage around a series of rapids with that, but that's not its goal. And that is the Super Sender summarized for you. This really is an amazingly fun boat. I've been paddling this a bunch this year. And amazingly, actually, I've been taking it to places where usually a dedicated surf boat is my boat of choice. And I've had so much fun in this boat 
on the great waves that we have around here in Montreal. Waves which are represented here by this incredible sculpture that's behind me. These are supposed to represent the Lachine Rapids and I think it's a pretty neat piece of artwork. So that's why I'm standing here with the Super Sender around these beautiful artistic waves telling you about this boat which if you're looking for a general purpose river runner that is going to really bring your paddling up to another level and make rivers much more exciting then I feel like this is a great place to start. Combined with our stronger, stiffer Hylix 16 plastic, our state-of-the-art outfitting, and a design which is absolutely second to none with features that other boats just don't have, it's hard to go wrong with the Super Sender. And I hope you have a great rest of the year with your paddling. And now, I'm going to go put my stuff on because it's time for me to go out there and boat.